Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a review on the Team Associated SC-10B. So, this is a short course buggy made by Team Associated based off the very popular SC-10 short course truck. So, let's get to it. The driver figure, as you can probably see, is not the stock driver figure, as it's Snoopy. Uh, this is the stock driver's figure, and I like Snoopy more. <laughs> At my track, we sort of have a thing where we put driver figures in our... Cars, someone has Mario, someone has the Hulk, someone's soon going to have Iron Man, and there's a couple others. So, let's take the body off. It's quite simple with just a body clip in the back and a body clip in the front. Then there's just two, not body clips, but like push-in tabs. So you just push in and the body removes. So I'm going to put that in the back. So, as you can see, it's... Quite a nice design. It's a very racy design, considering it's based off the SC10. So, first thing you might notice, tires aren't the same as stock. The stock tires were all right. The fronts were really terrible, but the rears were pretty good. But, of course, I had to upgrade because I'm racing it, so RTR tires don't do great on racing surfaces. The stock rear tires were... Um, J Concept subcultures, and here's what they look like. So as you can see, they have a pin design, which is not bad for like a kind of outdoor loamy track, and for just kind of sort of general bashing on like a pretty fine dirt. But for an indoor track, it's much better to have these, which are J Concept dirt webs. Even though I'm not falling in love with them, I'm falling more in love with the uh, Proline Electrons. So, let's move on. I'm going to start with the negatives, then go to positives, and then go to upgrades I would recommend. So, negatives. First off, the servo is terrible. This is an upgraded servo, but the servo is horrendous. It's, they say it's a point two second servo, but it felt like a point forever servo. I mean, it was, it was just piss poor. Um... The links on this uh, truck were pretty, pretty fragile. I bent probably five out of the six of them. They're easy to bend back into shape, but again, they bend quite easily. The ball cups themselves, they are known as the team associated ball cups, and they're they're known to break pretty easily. So I broke some and stretched some out. So I replaced those with the R R RPM ones. Uh, another negative, the short course uh, buggy body is a full roll cage, so it does raise the center of gravity up a bit, but that's really not a negative, it's more of a kind of eh. It's not bad, but it's not great. So, another negative, I found the steering link, or the steering uh, assembly to have quite a bit of slop in it, and that's really about it. In negatives, there's nothing much more to say. I mean, there is one more thing. The motor that came with its stock was terrible. It it had plenty of speed, but the torque was really lacking. So, if you're gonna bash it, the it wasn't. If you're gonna bash it, it wasn't horrendous. But again, lacking torque. If you're gonna race it, it, it was gonna overheat, and it just wasn't gonna work. So let's get to the positives. Positives. It's really fun to drive. It looks awesome, and it's quite durable. Uh, I mean, apart from the linkages and the other things I mentioned, it's quite durable. I did found, how, however, that the arms, the front arms, I wouldn't call them weak, but I upgraded to RPM just because we had a triple at the track, and pretty much you'd come off the triple, and on the landing, there was, right next to it, there was a pole, like a support beam, and... I clipped it a couple times and broke some A-arms, so I decided just to spend the $10 on the RPM ones and not have to worry about that. But for most applications, they work fine. So, another positive, the truck itself is based off the SE10, as I've mentioned before. So, it has a lot of racing pedigree, and it's really adjustable. So, for the basher, that might not be a huge deal, but for the racer like me, that is quite quite nice. So with all the adjustability you can you have 
uh, three positions in the front, and or three positions on the shock tower, two on the arms, and then plenty more uh, camber and, and all that. But it's it's um, very adjustable, as I said. With the castle system I have in it, it's ballistically fast. I mean, <laughs> it's so fast. So I, I had to turn it down, actually, because it was ridiculously fast. Um, apart from that, the positives, I mean, it just gri drives great. It's a great truck. I, I would definitely recommend it. There is nothing particularly wrong with it. I would say, however, if you're going to buy it and you have electronics or you're planning on replacing them anyway, try to find a roller on eBay or RC Groups or something like that. Just because the stock electronics, they'll get you through the race and, I mean, they work. But they're pretty terrible. I, I would, if you're going to only replace one thing of the electronics, definitely replace the servo. This is a solar servo, and it's it's a nice servo. I mean, it's got an aluminum case. It's point zero uh point zero eight transit time, and I can't remember the ounce inches of torque, but it's I, th I think it was in the one forty one sixty range. So it's got enough torque, and it's twenty dollars, so you can find it on hobbyparts.com. It's the Solar D seven seven one, I believe. They have a D seven seven O, which is smaller and uh, faster, and then they have a D seven seven two, which is bigger and more torque. So I'll link the servo in the uh, description. Also, the Castle SCT Sidewinder SCT system, ballistic amount of power. I'll also link that in the description below. And I'm just using a spectrum receiver. The battery that I'm using is a Turnigy 5300 milliamp nanotech. These batteries work great. I also have a 6000 million or 6000 milliamp that I actually like more. And the Turnigy batteries they work really well. They're cheap. I believe the 6000 milliamp hour one was like 35 bucks, and the 53 was 30, I think. And they work great. The this one has a 50C, or the 50, the 5300 milliamp has a 50C rating, and the 6000 milliamp, I believe it was a 60C rating, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, all in all, the truck runs great. It, it's a lot of fun to drive, and the only upgrades I would really advise are definitely the factory team links, or the Lunsford ones. The Lunsford ones might work better. I haven't checked on price, but I'm assuming they might be a little bit more expensive than the factory team ones. But either way, definitely replace the links with something better. Definitely replace the tires, but that's given for most RTRs. The front A-arms, I wouldn't say they're a must, but if you have 10 bucks laying around, the RPM front A-arms are pretty nice. Um, apart from that, I have replaced the shocks with some threaded body ones. Still small bore, but threaded body. That was only because my friend gave them to me. He didn't have a use for them. And honestly, if he hadn't given them to me, I probably would still be running the stock shocks. Maybe I would have upgraded to big boards, but I don't know. Um, big boards would be nice if you're willing to spend like around 80 to 100 bucks on all four of them. But if not, the stock shocks work fine. And then I don't know if you guys can see, but the blue shiny metal there, that's the factory team... Uh, steering assembly and that will remove a lot of the slop from the steering so i also have the uh cvds again that's something my friend gave me probably would have upgraded to cvds because i'm racing if you're just bashing the um what's it called the dog bones work fine and the only other upgrade is you can't really see it but i have aluminum hexes only in the rear, not in the front, because it's two-wheel drive, so you don't really need them in the front. But aluminum hexes are really nice, and they work really well. And I believe they were 10 bucks for both of them, so I would definitely recommend those. So all in all, great truck, lots of fun to drive. Would definitely recommend getting one. And make sure you go to your local track and check out if they've got a class if you plan on racing, because I know a lot of tracks don't have a class for this yet. So I would definitely recommend buying one. I'll link all these parts I listed in the description below. So, hope you guys like this video. If you didn't, please leave a thumbs down. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. 
either way helps me out. And yeah, see you guys on the next one.